This video lists and breaks down the impacts of the best NBA lockdown defenders. Some use their gifted physical abilities to their advantage, while others rely on scrappiness, IQ, and pure determination. Stay tuned to find out the best defender of them all at the end. If you haven't already and enjoy my content, help me get to 50k by subscribing. Also, hit thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. Now let's jump straight into this. Due to being injured, OG Ananobi couldn't build up a name for himself in the Raptors' 2019 title run, but Toronto's most gifted defensive weapon has a massive impact. Swiftly moving like a backcourt player, OG's 7'2 wingspan, in addition to his mobility, allows him to guard all five positions. As you can see here, OG spent around an equal percentage of possessions guarding one through five, and Anobi's ability to hold his own against pretty much anyone is a big reason for why going small is even a viable option for the Raptors. Centers can't bully him in the post, and he gives Toronto the flexibility to switch every ball screen if they choose. He's one of the more physically imposing lockdown defenders in the league, all decide if he's the best one at the end. The number three ranked player at his position and defensive rating, PG's elite perimeter ball hawking carried the Clippers to four straight wins without their best player healthy. Kawhi went down, but good on George for filling the role as the main guy like he was with the Pacers. Paul remains one of the best stars on both ends of the floor in basketball. Kawhi's scoring is one thing, but his milestones on the other end of the court include shutting down LeBron in the 2014 Finals and shutting down Giannis in the 2019 East Finals. The Claw's also a two-time Defensive Player of the Year and Steals Leader and he's made an all-defensive team seven times. Kawhi ranked two spots ahead of PG at number one in defensive rating among small forwards. Jimmy Butler has been one of the best two-way players in the world for almost a decade now. Not only can he snatch passes and knock away his matchups handle, but Jimmy's rotational defense is on point as well. Having a full off-season of rest will mean a lot for Jimmy was worn down last year after guarding TJ Warren, Giannis, Brown and Tatum, and then LeBron in the NBA Finals. After doing that in 2020, Butler only got a month to rest before training camp. He still made his fifth all-defensive team and led the league in steals for the first time in his career. The value PJ Tucker had on the wing for the reigning champions can't be emphasized enough. He guarded Jimmy Butler in the first round, Kevin Durant in the second round, and Devin Booker in the NBA Finals. He guarded Kevin Durant for a total of 59 minutes, and during that time, he held KD to 13.2 points per game with 11 turnovers. Not to mention just 45% shooting from the field, which is solid, but not great for KD. If Tucker doesn't do that, KD probably averages 60 in the series and carries Brooklyn to the conference finals. So with Jimmy and now PJ Tucker along with Kyle Lowry, the Heat's defense could be something special. Fred Van Vliet held Curry in check after KD went down in the 2019 finals. Steph had to carry even more when Clay got hurt a few games later, but the man who bet on himself isn't too easy to get past. He may be undersized and lack the athletic pop of most point guards, but Van Vliet's the definition of pesky. Freddie gets up in his matchup's grill and doesn't let them off the hook for a split second. He ranked 8th among PGs in defensive rating for this year, but since his value was a big part of a championship effort, Van Vliet had to be respected in this video. Rudy Gobert let down Jazz fans with his lack of defensive effort in the 2021 playoffs, but he led all players in defensive real plus minus during the regular season, given the Stifle Towers a three-time DPOI and was the backbone on this end for the number one seed in the West last year, he more than earns a spot in this video. Rudy knows he has to be a lot better in 2022's playoffs, but at his best, Gobert stuffs shots with pristine timing and merciless force, so you gotta watch out for that as an attacking player. 
The two biggest superstars listed in this video I tied together in one given they both have iconic chase down blocks in the NBA Finals. LeBron and Giannis both have an intimidating defensive IQ in terms of their ability to read the passing lanes and rotate to block shots. In terms of right now, I'd give the slight edge to Giannis given his quickness, length, and springiness. In September of 2020, Kevin Durant called Drew Holiday the best guard defender in the league on a podcast, and Drew lived up to that reputation the next spring. Drew was the primary defender for Devin Booker in the finals and held him to 22% shooting from three-point range. I could watch highlights of this man Drew clamping top wing scores all day long. Holiday makes fighting through screens and sticking with a player in one-on-one -on -one scenarios at the highest level look easy. Milwaukee's point guard can lock up bigger players, as even though he's only 6'3", his wingspan stretches out to 6'7". More impressive than that length is his physicality and awareness. Overall, for attacking players, Drew's one of the smartest, strongest guards to deal with in the world. In the series against Phoenix, LeBron may have averaged 22 points on solid efficiency, but Jay Crowder held him in check as best as he could. One of the biggest reasons for James taking his first ever opening round series L is Crowder checking him throughout the Suns' six-game mauling. James made him look silly on a few plays in the post, but the best part about Crowder is that he never backs down. At 6'6", 235, Crowder is extremely versatile, which allows him to shift over to the small ball 5 spot. His strength, mobility, and straight hustle make him one of the best wing stoppers the NBA has to offer. If Draymond Green made this shot, the Warriors would have made the playoffs, but Draymond did his job on the other end this season. He made the all-defensive first team, probably because he had the lowest defensive rating among all power forwards, ranking one spot ahead of Giannis. If the Warriors only had a tad bit more scoring, they would have easily made the playoffs as they ranked top five among all teams in defensive rating. The Warriors being that high in such an important advanced stat has everything to do with one of the best defenders of this generation in Draymond. OKC's Lou Dort is certainly on the come up. He guarded Harden in the first round of the bubble playoffs and helped Chris Paul force the Thunder's series against Houston to seven games. After going undrafted in 2019, the guard from Montreal, Canada has elite lockdown upside. He also doubled his scoring in his sophomore season, so he's a young two-way player to look out for. At the back end of the Hawks' pick-and-roll defense, Clint Capella was a big factor for Atlanta coming up two wins short of reaching the finals. Capella's always one of the top shot blockers in the game. He was fourth in that area last year and led the league in rebounding. Big time credit to Clint for proving Houston's front office wrong for trading him. He's done outstanding in Atlanta. If healthy, Miles Turner is one of the most impactful defensive centers behind Gobert. With the Pacers flying, Turner even looked like an early DPOY candidate to start the year. Indiana soon fell off, then Turner suffered an injury that kept him out for a significant stretch. Becoming a two-time blocks leader, Turner's easily a top 3-5 to five center on the defensive end. Before deciding the best defender of them all, quickly I want to give honorable mentions to Torrey Craig of the Indiana Pacers who helped neutralize Paul George in the West Finals for the Phoenix Suns, talked more about Torrey in my Pacers video, Alex Caruso, whose peskiness and IQ bothered elite backcourt players in the Lakers' 2020 championship run, Caruso's defense off the bench gives Chi-Town a much better chance at getting a top five seed out east. Also, Lonzo quietly ranked third among all point guards in defensive rating, so the Bulls have some nasty backcourt stoppers. Lastly, I want to mention Danny Green of the Sixers, who led all shooting guards in defensive rating. He's a three-time champion for a reason, but he gets labeled as a ring chaser for some reason, which is unfair. Philly fans have a solid two-way guard in Green. The two most valuable players on this end, in my humble opinion, basing it off the most recent season, are OG Ananobi and PJ Tucker. OG's ability to recover, combined with his strength and reach, make him otherworldly. 
P.J. Tucker's bulkiness, pursuit of the basketball, and fundamentally sound positioning helped the Bucks to their first ring in 50 years this season. But I'm giving the slight edge to Tucker right now. That's just my take, though. Let me know yours in the comments section. Hope you have a great one. D-Flow signing off.